Stay frosty and head over to EasyMutt.com for the cheapest mutt coins on the market. And when I say cheapest, I mean it. We're talking 1 million coins for around 40 bucks. Use code DIRECTOR for 5% off. Yo, what up, brothers? What's up? It's the director. Chargers fans, I have got a big one in store for you guys today. The Chargers have so much potential going into 2021 season. A lot of you guys are always asking me, director, if you were the GM, what moves would you make to try and make a playoff run in 2021? And that's exactly what I intend on doing today. I want to take the potential of this team and show you guys exactly the moves I would make in order to make a playoff, nay, championship run in 2021. Everything from looking at the cap, uh, cuts, re-signs, uh, free agency, and even the draft. We're going to go through everything. Because I think the Chargers are going to be buyers in the 2021 season. We got a cheap rookie quarterback in Justin Herbert. We got a lot of financial freedom, especially moving into next season. And the Chargers are in a transition right now with a brand new coach moving into 3-4. I'm going all in, man. I'm going all in. So before we do get started, guys, because we got a lot to go over, keep in mind this video is going to look a little bit different feel a little bit different because this is this is a special video man i think you guys are going to enjoy it before we do get started hit us up with a like and sub if you guys do enjoy this content the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like sub and bell notification helps me out a lot let's get into this video lights camera hold on to your butts The Chargers full off season bold strategy. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. As always, there's gonna be opinions in the comment section below. I welcome it. Let me know if you guys agree with the stuff I'm doing, disagree. Uh, please give me examples of how you guys would do this. But for me, this is, I have complete control over the team. We're gonna make a playoff run in 2021. Let's start with the NFL cap space situation. Now, right now, the projected NFL cap space is at 185 five million dollars per spot rack you take into account the chargers rollover cap of eight million dollars from last season spot rack has us projected for 33 million dollars to start the season but to execute my plan this will not do we're gonna need more money and to do that we're going to have to take a look at the cap casualties. In order to free up some of that money for the LA Chargers, we're going to have to cut a few players that maybe underperformed last year. And unfortunately, the first player I'm going to be cutting is Trey Turner, acquired last season from the Carolina Panthers after an underwhelming and unhealthy season. I just think it's time for the two to part ways. It would free up $11.5 million in cap space for the Chargers. And with no dead cap, I think the Chargers should look for a different answer at right guard moving forward. Our next cap casualty, unfortunately, is going to be a longtime vet of the team, KC Hayward, who would free up $9.5 million in cap space. Kind of a similar situation to Trey Turner, an unhealthy, underwhelming season. I understand that he played a lot of the season with an injury that may have uh, had something to do with his poor performance but still i think the chargers really do need a true top five cornerback to execute the kind of strategy brandon staley uses in his aggressive defense and unfortunately for casey hayward i think his time in la is up and the final notable name on this list is going to be mike Williams. Now, this is super tough for me to say, but $15 million against the cap on his fifth year option is just not going to do for me. But I haven't given up on Mike Williams. No, we are not cutting him. Hey, we're going to be extending him to a four year, $42 million contract, which is structured in a way to only take a $6 million cap hit in the 2021 season. We'll throw in a two year guarantee with a potential out in 2023. When it comes to extending Mike Williams, I want to keep him on the team, but I do think the Chargers hold all the cards when it comes to his contract underwhelming past couple of seasons but he does fit this team very well so I think they come to an agreement a consensus as to a low cap hit first year maybe a guarantee in his second year with a potential out if things don't work out in 2023 that is a total savings of nine and a half million dollars in 2021 but to keep some consistency for Justin Herbert in his second season I think it's very important I love Mike Williams I think he needs to stay on this team now finally in terms and speaking terms of 
of cap casualties. There's are, there are a couple of players I do think need to walk, one of them being Melvin Ingram. I just don't think in a 3-4 scheme, he's going to fit very well here unless he transitioned back to outside linebacker, which honestly I don't think would work out very well. So unfortunately, I think we should let him walk. Additionally, I do think Denzel Perryman will walk. I feel like he watched his replacement and Kenneth Murray get drafted in the 2020 season. So I do think the Chargers already have an answer at that position. I think it's time to let these guys walk, unfortunately. Now we take all these cuts and adjustments and extensions into account. The new adjusted cap for the Chargers in 2021 would be 63 and a half million dollars see now we're talking now we're cooking we can we can work with that so let's put that money to good use let's move on to the next segment of player re-signings i'm only going to mention a few that i feel are very important to retain for the chargers in the 2021 season the first of which is going to be hunter henry who's going to sign a contract for four years 44 million dollars with only an eight million dollar cap hit in 2021 in my mind hunter henry is an obvious top five tight end an underrated run blocker i feel again the consistency for Justin Herbert going into 2021, very important. And Hunter Henry is definitely one of the best tight ends in the league to help him do that. So I think the Chargers must retain Hunter Henry going into this season and several years into Justin Herbert's career. The next guy I think the Chargers should absolutely re-sign is Michael Davis. He's going to sign a $5 million contract annually. I haven't been able to find any projections for his value, so I decided to give him $5 million. Uh, maybe it's going to be over the course of, I don't know, two or three years. But for this season, I'm going to say it only costs $5 million against the cap. And to me, Michael Davis has really solidified his role as the number two cornerback on this team. He's tall, like 6'2", very, very fast, and I I do think as a number two cornerback, he's a guy that we can count on to help hold down the fort against guys like Tyreek Hill, even Travis Kelsey. I think he's an important part of the formula for the Chargers DB unit in 2021. Now, there are other names that could come up as far as re-signings, but I think these are the top two that I have my eye on. You could also consider guys like Forrest Lamp, Dan Feeney, but these are the two that we're going to focus on here. After of which, the adjusted cap after re-signing Hunter Henry and Michael Davis would be 50 point five million dollars this is what we have to work with going into free agency but before we do we need to talk trades and i do have the chargers slated for a couple of pretty big trades this upcoming season the first of which is going to be chargers trading away jerry tillery to the minnesota vikings for a third round pick now i get it we drafted jerry tillery in the first round but he's had flashes of why we drafted him in the first round but not consistently enough where i think we can get a second or even first round pick so i think the return would only be around a third round pick but for the minnesota vikings they need a lot of help at pass rush from the interior defensive line position. I think Jerry Tillery could still offer that to them. And for the Chargers, I just don't think there's a place on this team for him anymore. If we're going to 3-4, he would be a liability at nose tackle when it comes to defending the run. The only way I see him on this team is if he shifts to outside linebacker, which obviously I don't think that would work out. So I do think a trade in this scenario is most appropriate. I do see the Minnesota Vikings as an appropriate trade partner. Now I'm not going to lie, guys. This next trade might just blow your minds the chargers acquire cornerback marshawn Lattimore in exchange for the 13th overall 97th overall and 2020 fourth round pick yep i'm doing it now don't be surprised guys if the chargers biggest offseason move this year is going after a premier cornerback i've talked about this in the past brandon staley ran a very intelligent defense with the los angeles rams uh really leaning on jalen ramsey to take away the opponent team's top receiver in order to play his safeties closer to the line of scrimmage to better defend the run and honestly it was very effective resulting in the top defense in the league in 2020 and in my opinion I think replicating that would be very beneficial for the Chargers especially considering we have talents like Derwin James and Kenneth Murray already on the team so if the Chargers can't get Jalen Ramsey which at this point I don't think is possible why would they target Marshawn Lattimore well, I'll tell you why it's because uh the New Orleans Saints are $100 million over the cap as of today. Now, yes, there will be some, you know, changes to that. Maybe, you know, Drew Brees contract off the books. You know, maybe they move some money around, shift some contracts. But in reality, it's still $100 million. And I feel like tough decisions are just around the corner for New Orleans. And maybe a casualty of that would be Marshawn Lattimore, who goes for $10 million against their cap right now. Only one year left on his contract. But the real question here is, would they be able to extend him this? season 
let alone afford him the seasons to follow? I'm not quite sure. And I think the Chargers sending their first round, fourth round, and then fourth round next year picks could offer some value back to the Saints in order to acquire Marshawn Lattimore. With the 13th overall pick, the Saints would position themselves to get somebody like a Trey Lance or J.C. Horn, premier players that would fit their books a little bit better, as well as offer upside as far as the positions of maybe quarterback, cornerback, you never know. This team's going to have a lot of issues to go through in the next couple of seasons post Drew Brees. And in this instance, I think the Chargers are willing to pay the price. They get their premier corner in Marshawn Lattimore. You pair him up with Derwin James, the other elite defensive names on this defense. And I think we're well on our way to transitioning to what made Brandon Staley's defense just so lethal. Now, after accounting for trades, the new adjusted cap sits at 40 and a half million dollars and this is dollars that are going to be spent in free agency and i have honed in on a few names i think the chargers should definitely consider targeting our first signing is going to be john johnson safety previously of the los angeles rams on a three-year 25 million dollar contract with a cap hit of six million dollars in the 2021 season now i think it's pretty evident why we're going after john johnson in this scenario again brandon staley uses his safeties a little bit different than other defensive coordinators playing them closer to the line of scrimmage and the guy he did that with was john johnson the chargers do have an issue when it comes to free safety nasir adderley kind of underperforming at this time and i don't think he'd play the roll very well you know closer to the line of scrimmage so why not bring in the guy that helped you build that mantra with the la rams that sort of versatility i think would be worth every single penny the chargers would pay him to come to los angeles spark the same kind of potential with a new team our next signing is going to be Corey lindsley center formerly of the green bay packers signing a three-year 29 million dollar contract with a cap hit of eight million dollars in the 2021 season now to me Corey lindsley was one of the best offense of lineman in the NFL last year. He would be reuniting with his former Green Bay Packers right tackle in Brian Bulaga. And Lindsley could offer a solution for very many years for the Chargers. I do think he offers a lot of value. I do think this is where the Chargers can afford to spend up a little bit in order to bring in that centerpiece, that building block for the offensive line, especially if we're going to be targeting young guys through the draft. The chemistry and mentorship that these guys would get from Lindsley and Bulaga could prove very very valuable going into the future. Now, finally, we got a couple of big names, guys. Okay, big names. Keep an open mind with me. I hope I don't lose you. The Chargers sign JJ Watt to a two year, $16.5 million contract with a cap hit of $7.5 million in 2021. Okay, yeah, we just dropped a bomb. But look at the details in my thought process here, okay? Houston and JJ Watt are likely going to be parting ways in the 2021 year. And I do think this gives the Chargers a great opportunity to pounce on a veteran that could help smooth the transition to a 3-4 defense, but as well as provide enormous value to the team. You've got to be talking about a cheaper contract for a player of J.J. Watt's age, pairing him up with a player like Joey Bosa on that defensive line. I can't really think of a better scenario for the Chargers when it comes to the price of a player as well as the presence of a player. Like, really, who are you going to double team, Joey Bosa or J.J. Watt? With a low cap hit and a low time commitment, I really think this is a no-brainer if J.J. Watt does hit the open market. Ooh, <laughs> J.J. to L.A., I dig it. And finally, guys, I gave this one so much thought. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let's do it. The Chargers signed Jadavian Clowney to a one-year, $6.5 million contract. <laughs> I mean, the guy's a three-time pro bowler, okay? I know Jadavian Clowney has seen better days after a super disappointing year with the Tennessee Titans last year, obviously fighting injury, not to mention he wasn't that effective while he's on the field. Why in the world would I want to commit cap space to Jadavian Clowney? Well, I'll tell you why for one he is a scheme fit in a 3-4 scheme he'd be reuniting with jj watt where he played the same scheme in texas but i feel like his physical traits are something that brandon staley could work with because for me it was honestly between jadavian Clowney and Leonard Floyd. And of course, you know, Brandon Staley has connections to Leonard Floyd. Anything could happen, it could certainly still happen. But to me, it did come down to price a little bit. Leonard Floyd would have definitely been way more expensive, demanded a much longer contract. Whereas Jadavian Clowney, 
You take a look at the story of Leonard Floyd, an underperforming player with the Bears, goes to a new team. Brandon Staley is able to use those physical traits and unleash the potential the Bears saw in him after drafting him in the first round. So not only would Jadavian Clowney be cheap, but I think we can see that same sort of resurgence under Brandon Staley with Jadavian Clowney. And guys, if we can get back to the good old days of Jadavian Clowney, I promise you the potential for one of the best pass rushers in the league exists with Jadavian Clowney. And if anybody can unlock that potential, it's Brandon Staley. I must reiterate, Nobody wanted Leonard Floyd when he was picked up by the Rams. Now everybody wants Leonard Floyd because of what Brandon Staley did with him. The same thing could happen with Jadavian Clowney. Keep that in mind. So finally, this leaves the Chargers with a final cap space tally of $12.5 million after signing all of these free agents. And that $12.5 million would be used for in-season spending, rookie deals, and likely lesser re-signings, guys that wouldn't cost too much to re-sign for the Chargers. But keep in mind, other contract restructures and money moved would likely happen to give the Chargers more cushion going into the year. Now, quick explanation, guys. I know it seems like we spent a lot of money, which <laughs> we did. But remember that the cap should be rising again in 2022. And don't forget that the Chargers are in a really good situation cap-wise going forward. They're projected to be a top seven team as far as cap space in 2022 with really only two notable players to re-sign in Derwin James and Uchenna Nwosu. The reality is that Justin Herbert's low cap hit from his rookie contract really buys us a lot of financial freedom for the next five years until 2025 on his fifth year option. Don't worry too much about the money it'll all work out now finally guys i do want to go over some of my thoughts on the drafts after making all of these selections all of these moves how would i address the draft of course not having our first round pick so let's do it let's talk about the draft in the first round with the 13th pick the chargers select nobody we got marshawn Lattimore. remember guys if we picked up a cornerback that was even close to marshawn Lattimore, pretty sure nobody would complain about spending our 13th pick on that so i do see a lot of value in that trade in the second round with the 45th overall pick the chargers select dylan raddins left tackle out of north dakota state ah here it is the answer to the chargers woeful left tackle situation dylan raddins dude i don't think this guy gets talked about enough like literally we're talking in a starting nfl caliber left tackle that can likely be found at the top of the second round i do think the chargers have a really good shot at him and when we're talking about an upgrade over sam tevy i think raddins would be a night and day difference. This guy's incredible in run blocking, very good in pass blocking, has all the physical traits to develop into one of the premier left tackles in the league. So I have a lot of confidence in Raddins. If he ends up, you know, falling to the Chargers in the second round, I would be excited to see the left tackle of the future. In the third round with the 77th overall pick, the Chargers select Deontay Brown, guard out of Alabama. This is a massive human being when you're talking about the kind of guy you would take with you to a bar fight i don't think anybody would oppose deontay brown this guy has got unbelievable size and potential to be one of the premier guards in the nfl and i honestly i think at this point in the draft in the third round it's a great value and the chargers would have likely found an answer to the missing piece of trey turner which they cut before the draft so i love the pick right there with our second third round pick 90th via the minnesota vikings of which we traded jerry tillery for the chargers will select hamsa nasiruddin safety out of florida okay all right so the guilty as charged podcast guys put me on this player okay hamsa is like a mini derwin james not even mini because he's also like six foot three let's call him a derwin james 2.0 he's not going to be as good as derwin james otherwise he would be like a top 10 pick but boy howdy i think learning under derwin james playing in that scheme that system he has the potential to be one of the most versatile safeties in the league and that's what i'm trying to buy for brandon staley is versatility give him flexibility to use his defensive backs in a way that made him so successful with the los angeles rams guys keep keep an eye on hamsa i might do a video on him later and then finally i'm just gonna do the top three rounds guys because i haven't done as much homework in the fourth round prior uh the chargers with the 97th pick are going to select anthony schwartz 
wide receiver out of Auburn. Now, I'm sure you guys will notice that in free agency, I did not take a wide receiver. I've been talking about John Brown a lot. In this instance, I felt it was more important to bolster that defense, but still pick up a versatile, speedy wide receiver, uh, this time via the draft. Anthony Schwartz, he's one of my favorite prospects right now. He's likely to run the uh, top speed at the uh, combine, and I do think his skill set can complement Justin Herbert beautifully, stretching the field, opening things up underneath for Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, etc. Really complement what makes Justin Herbert a special quarterback. And again, it might be a little bit of a reach, but how many times have we seen the fastest wide receiver in the draft get reached for? So I think that's a pretty good pick at a pretty decent value. Whew. That's going to do it, guys. Okay, a big, long, exciting video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is this is the part uh, where you guys discuss. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Well, what do you think? What, what do you think of my 2021 offseason bold strategy? Because it is bold. But, I mean, if you were to break down, like, the moves that, let's say, the Rams made in their Super Bowl year, I think everyone would say it was insane, right? I, that's kind of like mentality I want the Chargers to have going into this offseason. We got some freedom, dudes. Let's go ahead and spend it <laughs> and make this team an immediate playoff contender as well as a huge Super Bowl threat throughout the uh, course of Justin Herbert's rookie contract. Give me J.J. Watt. Give me Jadavian Clowney. Give me Marshawn a lot of more well guys i i cannot wait to read the uh, the comments let me know what you guys would do if you would maybe shift a couple of things i did or completely shoot down all the ideas either way man it's a good time it just gets the discussion started well guys thank you so much for joining me this has been the director we'll see you next time and as always bolt up and stay frosty make sure you like and sub this one took a lot of work bolt up